Good morning and welcome to the daily live stream. How are you doing? Um, I was, uh, thanks for the comments already. We're already the live stream chat's already filling up and uh, I can see a number of you guys are telling me that you're going to be at the Tuesday evening uh, marketing class. Let me, I'm gonna ring the bell for that one. That's pretty exciting. I'm very excited about that. Forgive me for being promotional, but I figure I, I get a little bit of, of leeway, right? Since there's all these, these videos are free. Uh, I do have a live event class. It's a pay class, but we're keeping it under a hundred bucks. Uh, but we're limiting um, registration to the first 100 people. That allows more time for Q&A uh, and make sure we can interact with people as we need to. But it's coming up this Tuesday night. It's called the Marketing Edge Workshop. It's about how to build a six-figure voiceover income. Talks about, in the broad sense, how I market my business, but also there's a big emphasis on direct marketing. So, and in addition to the live uh, event, which is scheduled for 90 minutes on Tuesday night. And by the way, you know, if you can't be there live, it's no problem. You get, you still get access to it. It's recorded and you can watch it whenever you want, as many times as you want. But there are a couple of bonuses that go with that. And I, I turn the, the camera onto my studio and I do the stuff I talk about. So you'll get to watch me and hear me make phone calls and uh, you'll get to see the whole thing. Watch me audition, you know, a daily routine, a suggested daily routine. And I actually go through that and do that in real time so you can watch. Those are the bonuses that come with it. So uh, there's a link in the description for all of that. And it seems like there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. There was that. Oh, also, I just want to mention quickly there, um, my students in the voiceover blueprint hear me talk a lot about my minimalist approach to, to voiceover. I like to keep things, you know, when it comes to hobbies, I'm not a minimalist. I have purchased more golf clubs, then I care. I'm embarrassed to admit, uh, I'm on a, 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 a shopping spree of guitars right now. Uh, and so my hobbies, I enjoy doing kind of going over the top <clears throat> when it comes to work. All I want is what works and I don't want any extra fluff in the way. And so once we remodeled or actually didn't remodel the basement, we remodeled upstairs, but we repainted the basement, put in new carpet down here. And when I put back up my whisper room, I took a different approach and I'll make this very brief, but it, I used to have a bit of a convoluted setup. I say convoluted. There were a lot of cords involved where I have a mixing desk outside of my booth and I would keep my computer there. I'd run cables over into here so that I could have my monitor uh, that was connected to the computer out there and my microphone in here would be connected to my audio interface out there. And basically I had, I could operate in two places out there at my desk or in here off the same computer, but it was getting a little too convoluted. So what I've done is I've set up now, now I'm operating with two distinctly different spaces, with, but the computer moves between them, but I'm using, I'm using that newer, um, that M2 MacBook air, but the small one, the teeny one, the 13 and a half inch screen or 13.6 inch screen. And it, and it's sitting by itself in front of me right now. There's no fan in it. So it makes no noise, but that's what you're, what you're watching me through the webcam on that little, on this little notebook, I'm doing all my work off this little notebook. All it requires, I've got a USB hub in here so that I can run a mouse and a keyboard and my iLock USB key, which allows me to licensed, license my Waves plugins and my um, Source Connect software and my Apollo Twin audio interface. And that's it. I mean, it's all sitting on this little desk. It's just a very, um, again, minimalist approach when it comes to this. So you don't have to be complicated to make things work. So the topic of today, I want to follow up because yesterday I talked about, I had a, um, a directed recording session coming up for a client, a newer client, <clears throat> excuse me, it was going to be on source connect and, and we did it and went fine. By the way, I survived, but it was a bear of a script. <clears throat> excuse me. And when I say bear of a script, I mean, number one, it was long. Um, the script says like over 6,000 words. Let me bring it up here. I've got in front of me almost 7,000 words. Now, not all of that was stuff for me to read, but the majority of it was. So it was long. Uh, number two, it was highly technical. It was, it was about anatomy. I, I said it was a medical narration and it wasn't, it wasn't medical in that there was no, uh, pharmacological terminology or disease. It was all about anatomy. It's not my background. I don't have background in anatomy. I mean, I've done some, some voiceover projects. So I talked about 
you know, acting like you've been there before, not, not in a deceitful way, not lying and saying, oh yeah, I've got experience that, you know, you'd never lie to a client, but also, you know, carry yourself like you've been there before and, uh, and know and have a confidence to know that you can do whatever's put in front of you and you can, and it doesn't mean you won't be terrified. I was, you know, I didn't sleep well night before last because of this session that was going to be tomorrow morning. And I knew it would be the most challenging directed session of my career. And I wasn't wrong. It was, but you know what? It went fine. Does that mean I didn't make any mistakes? No, my gosh, you would have died laughing. I'm sure if you could, if you could see some of the stuff that happened during, during that, but it was basically the engineer and I both who was directing it were just kind of working our way through it. Um, it was, it was, it was as hard for him, I think, as it was for me. Uh, but you know, I, so what do you do when you've got something like that coming up, you know, spend, spend a little time beforehand to get familiar with it. And I did some studying of the, of the terminology and what's, what's interesting with this kind of stuff is there's not just one. I mean, there, there are multiple ways that people pronounce a lot of these terms, anatomical terms. A part of it is where you're from, I guess, you know, what part of the world you live in, but there are, are different acceptable pronunciations. So it gets a little complicated. Um, but if you, you know, if you go in being as prepared as you can, not meaning you're going to be flawless, but you have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And, um, you know, you just listen to what the, you know, don't get uptight. I mean, just relax, force yourself. You'll be uptight, but just breathe deep and just try not to get too ahead of yourself. Don't get flustered. Don't get frustrated. Um, you know, don't be overly apologetic. Uh, I mean, believe me, yeah, there were times that I apologized because there, there was some struggling going on, but, but I, but I, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I didn't, I didn't make it appear as though this was a brand new thing for me. You know, I also didn't pretend I was an expert at it, but, but I think by the time we, by the time we were done, he was very complimentary. The engineer was, I think, grateful for the fact that I had actually done some preparation. So when somebody gives you a challenge like this, I encourage you to take it on, even though it may be terrifying. Because I remember when I first started doing highly technical stuff like this year, early on in my career, and I would get so upset with myself. I would get so frustrated. I mean, it would just drive me nuts because I was struggling. But you know what? All these years later, I am so glad I did. Because now, um, even though I'm not perfect at it, I can do just about anything. You give me something and I, I'll figure it out, you know. And it's allowed me to make more money and to have a very broad career. And when clients need me for something, I can do something. Now, let me give you, I wanted to give you an idea of what the script, and this is not, uh, I guess this is a sample. It's, this is maybe not the worst part of it, but just to give you an idea, let's see here. The reserve zone is located at the top of the, epiph uh, of the epiphyseal plate and maintains the integrity of the epiphyseal plate structure. In the reserve zone, chesent chondrocytes are embedded in a cartilaginous matrix. Chondrocytes in the reserve zone also have the ability to act as stem cells in the postnatal epiphyseal plate by differentiating into other cells, including osteoblasts. Now, so it was a solid hour of this, basically, and sometimes a bit more complicated, but that gives you an idea. Now, again, you know, if you come from a medical background, um, you've studied anatomy, that probably is not a big deal to you. But for a guy who studied business and communications, that was a pretty big deal for me. But I made it through it, and I just wanted to encourage you and let you know that you can too. So um, I know, you know, people ask me, what do I do when I'm nervous? I get asked that all the time. Well, I'll, I get nervous too, even after all these years when it's something like that that's challenging. And my answer to that is I do it anyhow. I just do it. I take a deep breath. I relax. And I just, I know that I can, you know, I know that I can because I've forced myself to do it enough times. But that's the only way. That is the only way that you get through something like that. So hopefully that's encouraging to you. And just remember, you know, <laughs> when you're taking on a project like that and you feel a bit, you know, and you, and you can, uh, you, you feel the, um, the tension building and just remember that how scared I was because I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was sweating just a bit yesterday. It was, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. Well, let's see who we've got on the stream this morning. We've got Phil in Tokyo. We've got John in San Diego who says, see you in the marketing training on Tuesday. Yes, John, I will see you there. Looking forward to that. Hey, Bob, back from Reedsville, North Carolina. How are you doing? Uh, Aaron, hello to you in Columbia, Missouri. Corey, Janesville, Wisconsin. Uh, looks like Corey's getting ready to move to Georgia. You're going to the warmer climates. Good for you. 
Terry, good morning from Falston, Maryland. Looking forward to the marketing training on Tuesday. Fantastic, Terry. So glad you signed up. And by the way, for those of you who aren't, get signed up. I want you there. Uh, there's a link below in the description. Check it out. You get all the details there. Uh, Rusty in Michigan, Lee in Florida, Borimer. Good morning. Jack in Phoenix, good morning to you. We've got Marie in North Texas. I'm well, thank you. Got my cup of Mardi Gras, co- Mardi Gras coffee. Marie, I've never had Mardi Gras coffee. I bet it's good. You know, there's this place that uh, Vicky and I like to go to, to Hilton Head, Long Island, on uh, Long Island, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And uh, we, we owned a condo down there for quite a while. We recently sold it. Made a bundle on it, by the way. Wow, what a real estate market. Unbelievable. Uh, but anyhow, it's just getting too expensive to, uh, their taxes are going up and they're becoming a little less friendly to people who own property and rent it out to vacationers and that kind of stuff. Anyhow, it's a whole thing, but anyhow, there's a restaurant down there called Kenny B's. So, and, uh, Kenny played football for I believe the university of Georgia and then went on to play, I believe for the new Orleans saints. And he owns it. He's like the chef there and it's, everything's done in like in a Mardi Gras theme. And they're in addition to the regular coffee, they have chicory which I think is a, must be, um, a traditional hot morning beverage in New Orleans, I guess so. But anyhow, the point of that being, if you're into Mardi Gras and New Orleans and you like that kind of food, check out Kenny B's next time you go to a Hilton Head Island. Rob, what's up in San Francisco, Maggie in Pittsburgh. How are you doing? I'm not even a voiceover artist yet, but your channel inspires me every day to focus on the right things in my consulting business and life. Maggie, thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. You know, and here, here's the lesson I learned early on. And, and I came into voiceover thinking it was different from other business. And I, you know, it's just, I guess I was insecure. I mean, I didn't know I had not never done voiceover, but I had, I was a, had been a business consultant prior to that. And it dawned on me one day that it's a business. I mean, it's no different from any other business. So whether, you know, it's a consulting business or whether you're a video producer or whether you sell widgets, it doesn't matter. Business is business. And it does, it's applicable across the board. Thank you for those words. I appreciate it. Hey, Misha, how are you doing in Chile, South Carolina? Carl Lynn, hello in uh, Lake Como, Italy. Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. Melissa, San Diego. John, Rhinebeck, New York. Casey in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Robert in Altoona. Uh, Sandra, Dallas, Fort Worth. Let's see here. Tyler checking in from Springfield, Ohio. OH. We've got Dave and the Big Apple. Good morning. Does the VO Blueprint members have access to all the webinars? They do. They do. They do. So here's the way. That, well, here's here's the thing. The VoiceOver Blueprint members already have have access to all the content. Like this, what I'm teaching on Tuesday, they already have access to all that content. Not, I mean, they don't have that event, but all that information. I've taught it. It's 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 in there, and they have they have that. And then. What I do uh, is when I, when I do a new event like this, it's for people who aren't in the blueprint, who haven't been exposed to that material. And so, but what I do is uh, several, you know, a, a few months down the road after I do the event, I'll put the event in there. It's just like supplemental material so that they will get access to that eventually. But they have access to, the, to that knowledge and content right now and have, you know, from the moment they signed in. Uh, let's see here. We've got MG in North Carolina. How are you doing? Matt, Central New Jersey. We've got uh, Igor from St. Petersburg, Russia. Hey, how are you doing, Igor? Thanks for checking in this morning. Uh, Let's see here. (laughs) Golf clubs? Yes, golf clubs. I know. I should even be allowed to, to, to hold a golf club, let alone swing one in a public location. But I love it, man. I love doing it. I love playing golf. Mike in Spanish Fort, Alabama. Bill in Boise. Derek Kennewick. Uh, David, Nashville, North Carolina, James, good morning, Sean in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mark, hello to you in Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, let's see here. We've got Alec in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Sharon, Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, Steve in Lexington, Kentucky. James, good morning. Wally, good morning, says there's a PRS guitar factory about 10 miles from here. Oh, wow. Okay. So PRS is there near Annapolis. 
Very cool. Very Paul Reed Smith. Good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Corey state of mind seems to be everything. Or as Russ from friends would say, Unagi. I wasn't a friends person, so I'm sorry. I probably got that wrong. Merrill. Good morning to you. Northern New Jersey, Tanya and South Philly, Amanda, Westchester, Pennsylvania, Brad. Good morning. Hey, Tracy in Rochester, Minnesota. How you doing? Uh, let's see here. Sergio in Hollywood, California. <laughs> Hope you minored in medical science. No, I did not. Not even close. That's why yesterday was such a bear. But, you know, I've done, you know, you do these things, you start picking up stuff along the way. So it's it's always an educational experience. Uh, let's see here. We've got Mike from Sioux Falls. David in South Carolina. Bruce. How are you doing? Do I recommend sitting or standing? You know, however you're more comfortable, Bruce. I, it, those kind of things I don't think are that important. I sit, um, but if you want to stand, you can stand. I think well, however you perform best, that's what I would re- recommend. Uh, let's see here. Chad, how are you in Daytona Beach? Let's see here. Bruce, how do you learn all those medical terminologies? You know what? Google is a great resource. Just Google pronounce and then the word pronounce and then the word and then pronunciations will pop up. It's tedious, but you know, it makes life way easier than it used to be back in the day. Yeah, you're right, James. Nobody cares if I know what they mean or not, as long as I can say them. You're right. I mean, half of what I say, I have no clue what I'm talking about in my job. I mean, that's the truth, Um, but that's okay. We've got, uh, let's see, A.M. Peterson in Kenya. Hey, thank you for being here. John in Lower Alabama. Got Chris in Shelby, Ohio. Theo, good morning from the kitchen table in lovely Palos Hills, Illinois. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, Again, just wanted to check in, let you know how things went yesterday. Hopefully encourage you to not allow any kind of anxiety. Um... You know, we, there's a, there's a, you know, we all have reasons why we think we can't do stuff, myself included. It's part of the human condition. We all have stuff. We all have issues that we deal with. Everybody, all of us, we all do. But we can decide to let that define us and limit us, or we can decide, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it anyhow. And that's been my attitude. I decided when I was, I remember early on, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I don't care. I don't care if I make a fool of myself. I don't care if I embarrass myself. I don't care. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do it and I will figure it out. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing as well. Hey, sign up for that Tuesday class while uh, the seats are still available. I was told uh, yesterday, Vicky told me it was filling up. This is like the fastest filling up class we've ever had. So it's filling up fast. I don't know how long those seats will all be available, but make sure I want to get, make sure you guys get in. So the link's below, check it out. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.